little bit late. We'll start with the roll call. Chair is present. Councilmember Druffel. Can someone tell me if Councilmember Druffel is here? I can't see behind. Thank you. Councilmember Hurt. Present. Councilmember Mendez. Here. Pulley. Roten. I don't see Roten. Councilmember Sledge. Councilmember Sawara. Councilmember Syracuse. Present and standing. Councilmember Toombs. Councilmember Van Reese. I thought I remember seeing her. There she is. Thank you. And Councilmember Vercher. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is a quorum. We can begin. We'll begin with consent. Items on consent, I will read through the consent agenda. Please let me know if there's anything that needs to be taken off. RS 2022-1610, 1615, 1616-1617, 1618-1619, 1620-1621, 1622-1623, 1624, 1625, 1627, 1630, 1631, and BL 2022, 1329. Those are the items proposed for the consent agenda. Do any of those need to be pulled? I'll read through the captions. If you uh, recognize something that you wanna pull, just let me know. RS 2022-1610 sponsors Allen Evans, Bradford, and others approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to the Davidson County Sheriff's Office to provide litter pickup and litter prevention education within Davidson County. Also on consent is RS 2022-16. 15 sponsors Allen and Hancock. This approves a grant from the Nashville Prevention Partnership to the Metropolitan Beer Permit Board to administer programs and activities to support adherence to the enforcement of underage drinking laws. Also on consent is RS 2022-1618 sponsors Allen, Evans, Welsh, and Stiles. This approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Office of Family Safety to fund staffing positions to help manage the multidisciplinary needs of its clients. RS 2022-1619 on consent sponsors Allen Evans and Hancock. This approves a grant from the Nashville Kennel Club to the Nashville Fire Department for the purchase of canine oxygen mask for each fire engine and ambulance in Davidson County. Also on consent is RS 2022-1620, sponsors Allen Evans and Stiles. This approves an amendment to a cardiac, to an agreement between the Metro government and Zoll Medical Corporation to provide cardiac monitors, automated external defibrillators, accessories, and the performance of preventative maintenance and repairs for the Nashville Fire Department. Also on consent is RS 2022-1621, sponsors Allen Evans and Hancock. This approves a port security grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to the Office of Emergency Management to to improve the detection, deterrence, prevention, and response to hazards in the port of Nashville by providing a multi-use, multi-hazard watercraft for critical infrastructure water patrols. Also in consent is RS 2022-1622, sponsors Allen and Evans, approves the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for a temporary rehab tent system for the Metro Nashville Police Department. Also in consent is RS 2022-1623, sponsors Allen, Evans, and Welsh. This approves a contract for services between the Metro Board of Health and Vanderbilt University Medical Center's Pediatric Primary Care Clinic to communicate with individuals and families to increase WIC program benefits and WIC program participa participation. Also in consent is RS 2022-1624, sponsors Allen, Evans, Welsh, and Hancock. This approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the Tennessee Department of Health to provide for the administering of environmental health programs. Also in consent is RS 2022-1625, sponsors Allen, Bradford, and Welsh. Approves a, a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metro Nashville Public Library to target library materials to persons having difficulty using a library, provide special services to children and young people, and to promote general education among support services. Also in consent is RS 2022-1627, sponsors Allen, Young, and Stiles. This approves a congestion management air quality improvement grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure for the acceptance of work to implement a traffic management system center. 
Also in consent is RS 2022-1630. Sponsors Allen authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Sandra Marshall against the Metro government in the amount of $28,000. Thank you. Also on consent is RS 2022-1631. Sponsors Allen Young Bradford and others. This approves a grant from the Recycling Partnership Incorporated to the Metro Department of Water and Sewer Services Waste Division for the support of Metro's recycling program for strategic planning, program assessment, program implementation, and recycling education and outreach. And on uh, bills on second reading, we have one bill on consent, BL 2022-1329, sponsors Allen and Bradford. This permits the Metro Tourism and Convention Commission to hold its public meetings at the offices of Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation. Do any of those items need to be pulled off the consent agenda? Seeing no request to pull us off, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say no. Any not voting? We recommend approval of the consent agenda. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in favor, zero against. Zero not voting. Now we move on to RS 2022 1611, sponsors Allen and Welsh. This approves an amendment to a Victims of Crime Act grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Davidson County Juvenile Court to fund Wrapping Around Families for Success program. I believe this needs to be withdrawn because we have a, a, a correction to this. So th this one will be withdrawn. And we don't need to vote on that, correct? Okay. RS 2022-1611 is withdrawn. Next is RS 2022-1613, sponsors Allen. This appropriates $22,255,800 from the general fund reserve fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metro government. This is our 4% allocation um, that we talked about to some great degree during the budget discussion. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Um, Council Member Mendez, do you want to move your amendment? Yes, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I have an amendment um, to uh, change one of the information sheets um, attached. Um, it, it's a... Uh, um, it's on page, the amendment's on page 39 of the package and it refers to the information sheet regarding the police department. Um, it, it, I, th I believe the sheet adds up to $2.645 million and the total amount of items on that page adds up to more than that. Um, and there's a reference to, um, quote, substitute license plate readers pilot program, 246,000. And I've got, um, a couple different questions. Um, uh, one is, how do we interpret um, an information sheet where there's more listed in projects than the total? Um, and then secondly, um, I'm under the impression that before um, any license plate reader um, equipment can be purchased, that we need to have a public hearing in the council, which obviously hasn't happened yet. Um, and, and so um, just to get it out for discussion, um, I saw this right before the amendment deadline on Friday, threw this out there so I could ask both of those questions. Okay, thank, those are good questions. I believe we have someone from the Metro Police Department here. Please come to the microphone and introduce yourself, and if you can answer those questions, we would appreciate it. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Cantrell with Strategic Development Division. Um, I want to address those questions that you had. To the best of my understanding, as far as how this budget is written or itemized, the lists are, the request for the $246,000 is essentially a request to substitute up to that dollar amount from the other granted line items to direct that towards the license plate reader pilot prep, essentially, in order to implement that program once all of the other protocols have been met so that we would have the ability to meet those protocols in order to begin the pilot program. We under, the pilot program is not starting yet. This is just the initial funding in order to move towards getting that ready to go. Thank you. Can you um, specifically address which, which of those other items above might be um, deleted from? Has that been determined? 
Our initial thought is that we would probably pull from the safety cameras, the security cameras at 507-400. So if I may, Chair. Yes, um, Councilmember Mendez. And I, I'm not sure whether this is um, for the administration or Ms. Darby, I just want to make sure that the total on pa that page, 2.645 million, even so even though the projects listed above that are more than that, um, the total being approved is 2.645 million. Administration. Ms. Wilson. Yes. Yes, that's what that's what's being requested. That's essentially a, if we need it, we're requesting the ability to reallocate up to that dollar amount towards moving to implementation of that program to be able to allow us to get everything ready to go to meet the other safety protocols. Thank you. Ms. Weed. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Mendez, yes, the total cannot be exceeded. So even uh -huh. with the line item above, it's still a cap. I mean, I, I guess, um, I guess philosophically, I'm, I'm not used to seeing uh, sort of um, smorgasbord four percent request um, where um, I'm, I'm used to us approving specific purchases. Not we'll decide later what we want to spend the money on. Is that? I mean, other departments. I don't. I don't recall seeing that before. Why? Why are we having it be sort of a, at the department's discretion instead of a specific list of things that is being purchased? Um, in that particular case, the items all have to be identified, well, in all cases, they have to be identified. This one was added in and it can exceed the total. So as um, we heard, if they eliminate any items or if there's price differences, this can be included. Um, well, I'll move on to the other question, but the, the, just to make a note in the how many of you pushing seven years of seven percent funds I, I don't i don't remember approving a list of equipment that had um department discretion later on to pick and choose among uh, a menu of things that are approved i only recall us approving specific things um not um, department choice later um, I, I guess more importantly um this is for the, i'd like to hear from the administration on this too I want to make sure we're clear per existing metro law no license plate reader technology will be acquired full stop until there's a public hearing and further council approval am i under agreed that that's the administration's position ms wilson Hi, Kristen Wilson um, from the mayor's office. It is entirely our intention to stay within all parameters of the law, absolutely. And so as the law requires a public hearing, a public hearing will occur. Be before any before. license plate technology equipment is acquired for free or for money. As, as as the law stated, we absolutely intend to follow it, yes. I just don't have it in front of me, sir, no. so, but if the law requires a public hearing, maybe we should ask a lawyer, then absolutely we will intend to follow And that. I will um, I offer uh, Lieutenant Cantrell also the opportunity to comment on that. Yes, my understanding is is that to be able to have the ability to start selecting or trying to determine what vendors we would be best, I guess would best serve our needs, we have to prove that we would have the ability to pay for the service that they would be providing. But this would not be purchasing any, any items, any equipment or anything of that nature. So when you um, talk about pilot prep, can you give just a little more detail about what that would look like? We, the plan, we obviously have to determine which pr which vendor, which products, um, hardware, software would work best to serve the needs of the department and the needs of the community. And so a lot of that prep work is going to be going into determining and ranking those products to see which would serve Metro Nashville the best, uh, what can be utilized the best. Our IT department is going to do all of that determination and see what we need to use, what 
uh, services will need to be provided. And then we also need to then account for the other protocols that are according to the legislation that was passed in the law to ensure that we are meeting all of those milestones before the pilot program begins. And all of that will cost money. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Chair, one last point. Yes, sir. Um, since I, I'll, uh, clearly nobody's got the answer for me today, so I'll state it as an affirmative statement. Existing Metro law prohibits acquiring license plate reader technology for free or in exchange for money without a public hearing happening first. And if the administration or MNPD feels differently, I assume they'll um, let us know promptly. Thank you, I've, I've heard nothing to that, to the contrary, so I appreciate you clarifying that. My understanding is when this pilot prep is over, there will be no cameras left. They will, they will Correct. be brought in and, and taken away. That's Correct. We will not maintain or um, hold possession of any of those items. Those are all main, being maintained by the third-party vendors that are basically doing a demonstration of their product, hardware, and software. We don't actually get hands-on with any of that. So it's a demonstration. Any, can, you, can you give us any information about data? It will, we would not have access to that data that would be the third party vendor, just like any public cit or private citizen could go out and collect information. That's all that they're doing. So, so no data will be collected. Correct. Okay. None of that would be run through Metro system at all. And no, um, to, my, to my understanding, only civilian IT personnel would be the ones that would be interacting with the third party vendors, making those determinations. It wouldn't involve any sworn police officers. Chair, what has been described would be a violation of current Metro law. We, this city cannot acquire for use to borrow, to own license plate reader technology without a public hearing happening first. I, I believe that there, let me, let me ask two questions. First of all, is a demonstration the same as an acquisition? I, I don't know what a demonstration I is. I believe that's where someone comes in and says, here's my camera, here's how it works. And then they walk away and take their camera with them. With it being out on the streets, taking pictures of people um, in cars? We can ask for details on that. That's a great question. I mean, somebody can take it to Mount Juliet and do a demonstration. It's legal there. Correct. Um, and also, can you um, provide more information about, my understanding from talking with Mr. Gilder is that he does have the intention to hold a public hearing yes. before this pilot prep. Yes, so absolutely. So I think that's, that's an important clarification to make that that um, does need to happen and is, um, is committed to. Yes, absolutely. Our intent is not to go outside of the restrictions and, and guidelines and boundaries of the law. We want to ensure that this is done correctly from the get-go and that all everything is followed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, I, I, I thought no, but so the, this money is going to be used to um, have a demonstration in Davidson County, the technology? It's not that it would be, it's that we want the ability to seek out vendor vendors that would be interested in providing that service. So the vendors usually will not come and do a demonstration without knowing that there is funding for whatever service that they are providing. Um, having spoke with uh, John Singleton, my understanding is that Metro government procurement will, will require a funding source in order to even do a request for proposals. And that's what we're seeking is just the proposals from, my understanding is the proposals from these vendors in order to determine which vendor would best serve our needs. And, and Chair, so long as I can have a commitment from the administration of the police department that there's no demonstration that will take place before the public hearing, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mind philosophically the money being set aside for it because the idea of a test program did pass the body, but we do, like, there can't, there cannot be a demonstration in this county without a public hearing first. That is a true statement. I believe we have a commitment to that. Um, can we get that? We, that has been, can, that statement has been made to why me. Why don't by we follow up in writing for all of that. you all on that? Um, I just, again, our lawyers don't know exactly what was written in the law, and so we will follow up in writing and confirm the public, the law and the public hearing for you all in you, writing. You guys need to figure this out, because otherwise I'm gonna move forward with the amendment. Like, figure it out. Like. It, there will be a public hearing before there is a demonstration. That is not that's, what the, what that's not what the administration is saying. That's what Commander Gilder said to me. Okay. 
Well, the administration is, is saying they'll, they'll write me a letter. The administration is saying we don't have the law in front of us right now that we were asked to comply with and we just like the time to pull the law and then follow up with you on that. MMPD has expressly said that they will do a public hearing and we're quite comfortable with that. We public hearing before, sure before the public hearing before the demonstration. demonstration is what I've heard MMPD just repeat, right. but on our end we just want to make sure if you asked us if we were going to be compliant with the law, our lawyers would like to look at the law and share it with us first and we'll follow up with you on that. With the understanding that I'm trusting the police department and Ms. Wilson is saying literally nothing to agree with the police department, but I'm gonna trust the police department on this. Um, I do not need to move forward with the amendment. Okay, I think this is an important discussion. I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Other comments, council member Pulley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just briefly, you answered most of the questions I might have on this, but I just wanna uh, ask the question uh, certainly you and Commander Gilder are very familiar with this LPR law, having walked that walk and journey with the council throughout uh, uh, the entire formulation and passing of the ordinance. Is that true? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes, Commander Gilder is much more versed on it than I am just due to his education and sure. ability and, to understand. And uh, you know exactly uh, what's in that law and what you have to comply with. And it's yes. your full intention of complying with that law to the fullest extent of that ordinance. Is that not correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, are there any other questions on any of the items on the... 4% request. Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Chair Allen, for recognizing me as I do not serve on this committee and um, I, I did not join you at the start of the meeting, but my question was particular to the allocations for uh, parks. Um, have, the, have any questions been posed about that thus far? If there have not been questions okay. about art. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm wondering if the administration can speak to, um, in the context of the operational budget, um, I had uh, inquired about uh, the 10-year uh, plan for addressing uh, Emerald Ash Borer um, in our parks and uh, in our public right-of-way. Um, and as I understood it, because I did not see it really reflected in the operational budget because it is an ongoing maintenance concern for which we have an action plan um, and we have some liability exposure. So in addition to us having a plan and working through that plan methodically to cover our, our um, safety obligations, um, I had felt that it was important for us also to have specific funding um, to meet uh, the schedule and recommendation of that plan. And so um, can, I, I think I had maybe had misunderstood that that would be addressed instead in 4% or is the intent to address that in the CSP? Um, I just need somebody to be able to speak to that because I do not see it reflected here. And someone from the administration addressed that. Yes, hi, council member. Um, if you look in the CIB line item entries, I believe there is an entry for Emerald Ash Borer at about $5 million a year, which is what the study said was needed over, I can't remember, you probably have it at the top of your head, but I believe 10 to 11 years in front of us. 10, yes. Based on the funding amounts that we have now in our 4% fund, we cannot absorb a $5 million entry there or at this point in time, a programmatic entry. So we will have to take a look at it when we come to this, the capital spending plan period. And we do have the CIB entry in place for that. Okay, so it is the intent of the administration for that uh, need to be reflected in the capital spending plan. It will be uh, what we look at as we compile the capital spending plan across all the priorities and needs and the funding available that is indicated to us by finance at that time. Okay, so I guess in talking with um, the department, how do you arrive then? I mean, I, I grant you there's the amount in the CIB from a planning perspective, but how are you arriving at from a priority standpoint? I mean, are you just relying on the department to say these various maintenance buckets here are 
more important than that? Or, I mean, when is the capital spending plan coming? When do you anticipate delivering that? Uh, we anticipate at this point, uh, all things considered in the uh, economic environment, we, uh, if all things stay the same, we anticipate doing the uh, capital spending plan in a fall cycle. And uh, the process we typically go through is we do spend time talking with the departments about maintenance needs and priorities overall. So they have input into that, just like they do in the CIB mm -hmm. too, if, and the prioritization that's reflected in that. We just make sure that that is still consistent uh, with uh, what was submitted in the spring with them um, and then have the opportunity to go through. And then, like I said, that another key input will be uh, what, what's available to us from a finance perspective as well as we, as we work that and then bring that forward to council for consideration and amendment. Okay, and, then, and if we can stick on the 4% fund, because um, we are half hour late at this point. Well, yes, ma'am, Madam Chair, but this is particular to the 4% fund because I'm inquiring why it's not in here, and I guess what I want to understand is then why I would say $600,000 of greenway lighting, I mean, is that just, that's, that's a liability judgment that you think um, spending that money now is more important than, be, because I'm just, I guess what I'll share, Madam Chair, is I'm concerned that for something that is a 10 year plan, right, that we operationalize that funding instead of like, oh, is it in the operational budget? Is it in the CIB this year? We're gonna put it in 4% and, you know, we need to have a through line on this in my view and be really consistent about how we are spending down this money to address this liability concern. So um, it, it, I mean, is, is the intent that it will always be in a capital spend, which seems a little awkward when it's kind of an operational ongoing safety maintenance concern. So I guess what I'm wanting to understand is was EAB discussed for this 4% and determined that capital is the better way to address that maintenance funding? And is there anyone from Parks who would uh, want to address that or Ms. Wilson, since you already have a mic at the ready? I do see someone from Park coming forward, thank you. I'm Mark Bradfield from Metro Parks, the Planning Division. I'm actually here on behalf of another bill. I'm not educated on the EAB plan. My understanding that it was a lot of it was being run through NDOT um, as far as the street trees and all that, and we were going to follow suit. That's about as much as I can tell you now. I will go back and answer any questions that you have, though. Okay, yeah, if you can provide additional information that would that would be appreciated sure. and miss Alarcone, I'm, I'm gonna um, sorry thanks okay great we got more information thank you um, Shanita White Metro Parks um, it's just like miss Wilson stated it was um, we had a prior allocation several years ago to get started with the um, study that was in the four percent but it was decided that the cap the CSP would be a better place for since there was such a large amount and that is in the CIB. Thank you. I'm sure we'll continue this conversation. Okay, uh, Chair Allen, I appreciate that. Thank I, you. I would just ask the administration, um, I would also appreciate maybe by way of letter or meeting or something like, I, I want to see in one place what the strategy is for funding the Emerald Ash Borer issue. Okay, um, please. Thank you. Um, thank you. We got that down as a deliverable. Thank you. Other, other questions on the 4% allocation? Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor, say aye loudly. Any opposed? I believe we're still seven. Seven in favor, zero against. Anyone not voting? Next is RS 2022-1614, sponsors Allen Withers and Evans. This approves an agreement between the Metro government and Metro Nashville Airport Authority for the use of John C. Toon Airport for the storage of aircraft, aeronautical equipment, and other related materials for the Metro Nashville Police Department. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions? This should have been on consent, but I missed it. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any not voting? We recommend approval. Next is RS-2022-1616, sponsors Allen, Evans, and Young. This approves an interlocal agreement between the Emergency Communications District for Nashville and Davidson County and the Metro Government for services and reimbursement of costs pertaining to enhanced 911 services. Do I have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval. Seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is RS 2022-1617. Sponsors, Allen, Bradford, Welsh, and Hancock. This approves an application for a project diabetes grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Nashville Farmers Market to create food and beverage environments that ensure healthy food and beverage options. Do I have a motion? I think I heard one. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? We recommend approval, seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is RS-2022-1626, sponsors Allen Withers, Youngs and Styles. This approves a federal COVID relief fund for transportation improvements grant and intergovernmental agreement from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to the National Department of Transportation and multimodal infrastructure for the acceptance of work in the connection with the construction of pedestrian safety and multimodal intersection improvements at various locations. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? We did have a good discussion on this in, uh, in transportation and infrastructure, so you can watch that if you have, do have questions. Seeing no questions, all those in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval. Seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is RS 2022 1628 sponsors Allen and Hancock. This approves a contract between the Metro government and New Origin Systems Incorporated for service maintenance and upgrades associated with Metro's right of way, right of way project collaboration application. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any not voting? We recommend approval. Zero in favor, zero against, seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is RS-2022-1619. Sponsors O'Connell, Allen and Young. This supports the artwork and project Athens of the South, which will be placed on the Tennessee of Department of Transportation's I-40 noise barrier located along Carroll Street and approves a license agreement between the Metro government and the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Council member O'Connell or Council Member Syracuse, someone has an amendment? Substitute? Excuse me. I turned on your mic, Council Sorry, thank Syracuse. you so much. I just wanted to point out, I think you said 1619, but this is 1629. 1629 that right? is correct. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is does have a substitute, which is just a housekeeping item. Okay. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the substitute? Say aye. Any opposed? We recommend the substitute. Do I have a motion for this resolution as substituted? I see a nod. Any uh, question on that? All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? We recommend the resolution as substituted. Seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is a late resol resolution by Allen approves a victim of crime act from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Davidson County Juvenile Court to fund the wrapping around families for success program. This is a replacement of the one that we just withdrew earlier. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Anyone not voting? We recommend approval, seven in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next, bills on second reading. We'll begin with BL 2022-1250, sponsor Styles, Welsh, Tombs, and others. This amends the Metro Code to create the Nashville Entertainment Commission. Do have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. We have uh, several substitutions on this one. Council Member Styles, we are on 1250. So let's begin with the proposed substitute by Council Member Stiles. If we can ask you to explain the substitute, please, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. The substitute adds an additional representative from unions, and then it also gives some qualifications so that anyone that would be proposed would have to have at least five years of experience within their chosen industry. Gotcha, thank you. Oh, and one more thing. It also makes it so there would never be more than eight of either music or film represented. So we have more uh, fairness on the commission. 
Great, thank you for that explanation. Discussion on the substitute by council member Stiles. All right, um, I'm gonna ask Ms. Darby just real quick, since we have competing substitutes, can you just talk about the process here? Um, if one substitute is approved tonight, later at the on the floor, then it will uh, it will substitute the bill. If the second substitute is also approved, it will supplant the bill as substituted. So the second substitute would overwrite and be the final uh, the final bill that was adopted. So on the council floor, that's how it works. From yes. the committee, can we recommend both and they don't supplant each other or does it work the same way for us in committee? It will not here. You can recommend both or uh, you can vote however you want on both. Okay, so we can consider both later. individually. That's helpful to know, thank you. So any other questions on council member Stiles substitute? All right. Council member Stiles. May I, may I make a, a comment in general? Yes, in regards? that would be helpful. <clears throat> so today you should have received several emails from stakeholders here in town in support of this substitute and why they are supportive of this substitute and not the other substitute. I hope that you have had the chance to read. We've had directors and producers. We have individuals from film and PROs <clears throat> responding to this substitute. And I appreciate and I have tremendous respect for Council Member Swope, I do. And we both bring experience to the table, but this is the substitute that the public has said that they want to see approved. And so I hope that you will listen to our constituents and consider that as you're considering approval of, of any substitute. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council members wishing to speak on this substitute? Seeing none, as it has been explained, we can vote on all of these individually and leave it up to the uh, council, council body to hear our recommendations and, and make the ultimate decision. So we are currently um, voting on council member Stiles substitute. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? I'm not sure what I heard. Council member Syracuse, is that a request to speak or was that a vote? That was an abstention. All right, I think I need to see hands on this one. All those in favor of council member Stiles substitute, please raise your hands high and hold them there. I see one. That's what I heard, okay. Any against, raise your hands high. Any abstaining? Lots of hands, okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Six not voting. Okay, now we are on to substitute by Council Member Swope. Council Member Swope. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it, <laughs> members of the committee, with all due respect to my fellow Councilwoman Stiles, okay. um, and I understand what she's trying to do here, but as we said a couple of weeks ago, I, I have been down this rabbit hole so many times in the past 30 years. I, I, I know exactly what this smells like when you get to the bottom of it. Um, on, on your desks, you'll actually have my CV to show that, yes, I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. Secondly, and much more importantly, you'll have a document labeled NEIB, which is the National Entertainment Industry Board. This has been compiled by group of organizations, including the Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences, Cinema South, Filmcom, Film Nashville Foundation, International Black and Film Festival, the Nashville Composers Association, the Tennessee Entertainment Alliance, Tennessee Screenwriters Association, and Women in Film and Television, to just name a few. Um, all of these groups I have worked with and or been a member of over the past 30 years, this this is an approach to take things to a business standpoint versus just a commission looking to get, uh, nothing personal, but get a grip another gig. Um, this takes a much more elevated approach to a commission or a board, you can call it whatever you want. It makes it smaller. We have done this with 15 members before and it's failed every single time because you get very conflicting interests at stake. If we reduce it to a nine member board, be very specific about who we put on 
and bring some bankers in, bring some distributors in. We have dis international distributors that live in this city that would be more than happy to help with this. Um, but, it, but it takes a completely different slant on Councilman's, Council Member Stiles' original bill, even as substituted. Um, and I ask your support. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. Just point of order. After we're done talking about the substitutes, do we then speak? Then we'll have a general discussion. The, thank you. About yes. So you want to wait for that? I'm get, I'm guessing. Okay. So any further discussion on Council Member Swope substitute? Seeing none. All those in favor of Council Member Swope substitute, please raise your hand high and hold them there so I can see that. I see two. Any against? I see none. Any not voting? I see one, two, three. That doesn't add up. Okay, four. I will say not voting because he's not voting. Okay, two in favor, zero against, five not voting. Okay, I think because we are just not very knowledgeable about this industry. Um, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. So we're done with the substitutes now. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate both of my colleagues um, focus on this and the proposals here. Um, I think it's perhaps uh, important for colleagues to understand some of the chronology that's gone on over the past uh, s some months um, since Councilmember Stiles brought this uh, idea of then it was a film commission. Um, and uh, when, when she brought this forward, I had already been working through the, the from the bottom up collaborative approach with, within the music industry. And between the CBC, Chamber, Mayor's Office, we started talking about how this really probably needed to be under one umbrella. Where I've evolved here is, is that it has become a behemoth <laughs> now of a 15, the, the original proposal, 15 member, uh, Council Member Swopes is down to nine. Um, there are synergies, absolutely, between music and film. There are also many specifics, and I think even Councilmember Swope uh, two weeks ago mentioned this is uh, apples and pickles, I think is what he, what, he, what he talked about. And you know what, he's right. Um, I really uh, would prefer the bottom-up collaborative approach with the industry leaders and not a top-down, legislate first, ask questions later approach. Um, it, I, I can't support really e either proposal, but I would like to offer uh, an, a, another option. Um, I, th like I said, we've ev I've evolved in understanding that there are some synergies here, but ultimately there are enough differences where I don't think we should put them all under one umbrella. And I talked to, to Butch with the CBC today and he actually agrees. Um, what I would request is that if we could just defer this one more time and the sponsor um, and the substitute sponsor perhaps could work together on whittling this down and focusing like a laser just on film, I think that's something that I could get behind. In, in speaking with the film industry, film leaders or, and, and whatnot, I do understand and, and comparing it to the needs of the music industry, especially with the new film incentive that, that the state has out there, I do think it's probably best that we focus first on film, find a way that we can uh, secure film permits on a more proactive way, and focus on that first. Creating this whole entertainment commission is going to really mess up things I've been doing over the past four or five years um, in trying to get a music industry group together that was going to also include f uh, film folks in order to make a more sustainable Music City Music Council, where I think we all agree is that not one branch of government needs to completely control us. Um, it needs to be sustainable. It needs to be something that um, has some level of co-funding uh, to it that is not just all uh, public funding because as, as we know, when the administration changes, then their uh, uh, focus could change and, and this could go away. Um, we need to make sure we focus on those things so that we once and for all, to Council Member Swope's point, um, we've been down this rabbit hole before, we need to f figure out a, a, a sustainable way. Um, and so what I would suggest is one more deferral, 
bring back a piece of legislation that is laser focused on how we can support film industry, allow me to continue efforts I've been doing on the music side. If this evolves in an organic way into a larger entertainment commission that the industry wants, then fine, we go in that direction. But so what I'd offer is a one meeting deferral with the request that the sponsor bring back a laser focused piece of legislation that is only on film um, and let us be able to support that and figure out a strategy in order to basically help us uh, get sustainable film projects here in, in uh, Davidson County. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion for one meeting deferral. Is there a second? second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to discussion on the one meeting deferral. Council Member Stiles, I think it's kind of now or never, so I'll, I'll recognize you. Okay, if you can tie it into the deferral, that would be handy. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, there have been a, a lot of conversations about this since I brought it forth. It, it was <clears throat> never brought to the floor as a film commission, it has always been as entertainment commission, because in all of my conversations of over a year in investigating how to create an office of entertainment, which is different than a commission, and I, I feel that it's, it's necessary to say there are offices that have commissions that assist in terms of advising. That's what the commission that we are talking about voting on is about. The office is a separate entity that is coming down the pike in the future, but would be good to have a commission already established so that we can move forward. They move forward side by side. That has been my intention from the very beginning. And in presenting the idea of having an entertainment office to the mayor's office, that's where it came from. Talking to multiple film offices across the country, Seattle, Austin, New Orleans, Savannah, understanding how this can work and commissions are important and we don't have one. And as we're talking about creating an office, we need to have a commission. Changing it midstream, I have not heard from any of the entities, not from the mayor's office, not from the CVC, that there is a desire to go backwards now and have just a film commission. So I am not in favor of a deferral. I do want to move forward. Again, I will reference all of the entities that you've heard from today via email. These are people that have read both substitutes. They are aware that there is also an office of entertainment coming. They are in support of this legislation. So I think it would be foolhardy of us to ignore our constituents and start listening to, oh, personalities or preferences. Let's go from what is in front of us. I appreciate Council Member Swope for, for giving us his, his resume and, and printing out what the board would be like, but there's no stakeholder that has said that they're in support of that. So with that, I, I would like you not to defer this for one meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Any other comments on the deferral? Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. The emails that we've received were form emails from uh, somebody in the, in the film industry. There are, there are important voices to hear. There were form emails though, with the request of copy paste, send it to council. Until just this moment, you have not received one single email in support from anybody who is a leader in the music industry. It's because they haven't been engaged on this proposal. So what I'm asking is that we simply focus on film, which is the voices that we've heard from. Um, it's not foolhardy, foolhardy to focus like a laser on the immediate needs and let the industry help us grow this organically. So I uh, would request that you still support a one meeting deferral with the request that the sponsor uh, come back with something that is laser focused on our ability to actually achieve something. A 15 member politically appointed commission is legislate first, ask questions later. And that's not a healthy approach. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Swope on the deferral. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm not opposed to a deferral at all. Um, and I've just spoken to the sponsor and we will get together and probably sit down with the mayor's office, the CBC and the CV uh, and the chamber um, and see if we can't collaborate. I, I would say that it's much more than film though. It's film television and what we used to call transmedia until that became politically incorrect. And now it's just the digital metaverse. Um, but but it, it, it's all morphed into the same thing. So uh, understanding that we, we would separate music from this, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Mus music, the music entertainment industry in this city 
has been its own animal for a long, long time, going back to gospel and Christian days in the 20s. So I, I, I support the deferral. Thank you. And, and, and I'm willing to work with the sponsor to laser focus all of this for everyone. Thank you, appreciate that. Any other comments on the deferral? Seeing none, we are ready to vote on the deferral. All in favor of a one meeting deferral, please say aye. Any opposed? We recommend a one meeting deferral. Six in favor? I think we still have six in the room. Zero against, zero not voting. Good, don't anybody leave. Council Member Pulley, you were a yes. Okay, I have six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. On the deferral. Thank you for giving us something we can work with. Next is BL 2022-1277, sponsors O'Connell, Allen and Bradford. This approves a license agreement between the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation and the Lamar Companies for the use of 100 Anthes Drive. Um, do you have a motion? I move. It's been moved and seconded. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just wanted to give an update as I deferred last meeting to try to get to some understanding. I had a good interaction with Metro Parks. Um, effectively, if we allow this approach to play out, uh, we will uh, have the opportunity to just take down the billboard eventually. If we were to act today, it would require a court order um, and probably action to uh, get back payments. I think this is sort of the, the approach on that the committee and I hope the body will be considering is the probably the uh, preferred uh, soft landing from a legal standpoint. So I encourage colleagues to support. Thank you. And can you clarify, there's, there's a large existing sign there. They're not going to construct a new one. It's just this one stays for 18 months and then it's gone. My understanding is that the existing billboard will be demolished, not to be replaced. It may be worth getting them to confirm that. I think uh, Mark is here. Or, or uh, you know, if, if our council knows as well, they can. I'll ask our council. I'm sorry, what was the question? The question, this is the question on uh, the, the billboard on Anthes Drive. Our understanding is that the existing billboard um, will come down in 18 months when the contract expires. That's my understanding that that is the plan, that it would come down in 18 months and then the entering into the contract also allows Metro to get um, some back rent as well. Lots of back rent. Yes. Okay. And the question I had raised was if we have this one billboard for which there is a substantial amount of back rent, do we know if there's a an official inventory of all the billboards and that we're being paid adequately for those? Anybody know that? Ms. Wiggins, did we ever find anybody who can answer that question? Can we find out somebody who can find the answer to that question? Because if we have to look at them, we ought to be getting paid for them, I think. Okay, any other questions on BL 2022 1329? Thank you for looking into that, Council Member O'Connell. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval, six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Next is BL 2022-1330, sponsors Allen Withers. This approves a lease agreement between the Metro Department of General Services and 5620 Nolensville Pike LLC for the use of office space at 5620 Nolensville Pike. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? I have a question, um, maybe for the administration. Can can someone explain who's using this and why there is no rent, why it's free of charge? Is that a general services question? I think I see Ms. Hunter coming forth. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Lieutenant. Glad to be here. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so as far as the lease on the property 5620 Nolensville Pike, we've determined that the police department does not actually have a need currently to utilize the building. And so we're just requesting that this be not done at this so time. are we withdrawing it then or um yes that's my yes i to what i understand is that we're withdrawing the request for the lease since we don't actually need the space currently okay so um so we're withdrawing this <laughs> all right we are withdrawing bl 2022 1330 thank you for that clarification i believe that brings us to the end of our agenda any other business that needs to come before the body no we are adjourned